So we are at Alton Park with the British Touring Cars as a support race in the Caterham 420. This is my last race of the year, so I was really looking forward to it, but testing did not go quite to plan. First testing session out, I overcooked it around Druids. If you've been here before, you know Druids is a super fast uh, double apex right-hander, understeered off and hit the wall pretty hard. Um, I don't know what's going on. Like this 420 must be cursed. It just does not like me. I'd, I've never crashed my Caterham 270 Road Sport or Academy. I've never hit a wall, so it was a bit of a surprise when uh, that happened. But it happens, doesn't it? It happens to everyone. So we kind of built the car back up, and we got so lucky that we didn't do that much damage. So that wasn't too bad. But then we've got into uh, testing two, and the clutch decided to go kaboom. All right, that's no fun. Testing has been an absolute nightmare with my first crash, which is obviously my fault, and now the clutch is gone. I've been left stranded. My car's parked all the way over in the distance. Oh, God. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> you know, I don't have to use the clutch Oh, what's going on here then? Give up, yeah. Yeah, just no clutch. I completely lost it. Pedal gone really high. No pedal. Right, okay. this isn't fun. It's not what you want to see, clutch is gone. God, this stuff gets worse and worse, doesn't it? Right, we actually booked dinner reservations, which we never do, and um, Dan's got to pull the engine, which is not good, but it looks like the clutch slave has just given up. Um, stuff flying around in the bell housing and destroyed absolutely everything. Pressure plate, the flywheel, the clutch, the slave, the, everything got destroyed from one little bolt. So that ended my testing. So I've had about 20 laps of testing. So going into qualifying now, I just want to get a good gap so I get a good toe. A toe is like eight tenths around here. So I want to line people up perfectly. I've lined them up and I go for it and he's slowed down on the last corner. So that is super frustrating. So that's killed that lap. I'd line it up again for another lap, turn in and he decides to overtake me when he just didn't want to be in front of me anyway. So I don't know. And then we were too close to each other going in, um, met some traffic and then we just got held up at the hairpin again. So. I was like three or four temps up on that lap, so that's super annoying. Obviously now this is munching into my prime slick, so this is really frustrating. Yet again, someone in walking speed in the braking zone of the hairpin. Um, coming down here, this was my only opportunity to get a good flying lap and I touched the kerb. It was stupid. I was up three temps already just in turn one, following someone fast and I threw it away for myself. And that was the biggest thing that hit me that weekend is I had one good shot and I absolutely blew it. But, you know, it happens, and I was super frustrated. Yeah, I have got an but it We managed to go back out for qualifying session, found a bit of clean air. I'm up two, three temps here, coming into the braking zone, and just someone going super slow. It ruins my speed, so I'm back now. I've lost three temps into there, um, but I think I can make it up in the toe, come into here, close in on someone, and that's it, I've almost come to a dead stop. You can see my delta just dropping massively. Um, so that was really frustrating. So I never actually managed to get a good lap in qualifying just due to traffic. I said what are the worst that could happen? And uh, yeah, I just didn't do well. I just like, underperformed. I was nervous. I wasn't quite confident, but then I also got blocked and I threw away my fastest lap because I touched the grass. So, yeah, they haven't made this weekend easy for me. It's not been the best, but we're going to go into race one and try and make up some positions. So, right, race one is about making up spaces. So I get a good start. It's not the best start in the world, but I managed to uh, at least hold position, which is nice. We're coming up the inside. I've hugged the inside because I don't want anyone to come up the inside. Going round the outside now of this driver on the right. I managed to stick it all the way around, get on the throttle and propel off. So that was quite good. Coming into the hairpin again, I just get left barely any room to go up alongside. So I have to back out of it. Um, and yet again, left no room, got given the grass at the, one of the fastest bits of the track. 
Um, and again here, like going up next to people is super sketchy into this hairpin because if they lock up on the inside, they just take you out. So you have to be really cautious, but luckily he overcooked it, touched the grass. I'm in the slipstream as well. So I managed to get a clean overtake into the chicane section. So I get a good run down here behind all three cars and I have like epic overspeed, but yet again, there's just nowhere to use it. They're all on the inside, but I tried to go wide, do a bit of an undercut, but Tim's just in the way and he overcooks it, lets another person in. So I never actually made a space there, even with all that overspeed, which is a bit frustrating. But this is definitely one of the trickiest tracks to overtake and it's super technical, like the most technical track I've ever done. And we're coming in again. I managed to come in deep, try to do the undercut on Finley, but he um, broke a drive shaft, so I had no gear, and I just clipped him with my left wheel, which massively damaged the car. Um, it just had no speed left. I was really concerned. I was thinking about coming into the pits, but I knew there was going to be loads of DNF. So if I could just carry on and not come dead last, I'll at least be in front of the people that DNF later on in the race. So that was kind of the aim. I let people through. I was just trying to be gentle. I was trying to be like keep the car on the road at all times but you can see here look how much i'm struggling on this left hander on and off on and off the front. it just won't turn in so yeah the car was massively sacrificed from that damage um but which is super frustrating but i managed to hold a few people off and hold a good position but their car was so damaged i couldn't do much with it like these people up the inside i try and do an undercut here i get in the slipstream um i think i managed to even do them into turn one even with a limp car so I was pretty happy with my driving, like I think I drive pretty well on defensive, um, but yeah, it's not ideal because you know I've got to do three races on these tyres and they are getting cooked because I'm having to overdrive and defend massively to try and keep these people behind me just to save a few spaces. In hindsight, I would probably come into the pits um, and just call that race a race and save my tyres, but I really wanted to make a few positions, at least not lose any position from where I started because I had a bad qualifying. This is definitely one of the sketchiest moments, 115 mile an hour and it just stepped out on a flat out corner. So by then I just backed off and let people pass. Race one didn't actually go too much to plan. It was to stay safe, make some paces up ready for race two and three. Um, and I made one place, <laughs> but that was mostly because of DNS because I had really strong pace on the first three laps. But then I came into an incident where um, somebody drove, broke a drive shaft so they tried to select a gear out the hairpin and unfortunately I ran and just caught them by a few inches but it pushed my wheel up in the air and bent some of the front arms. I've got a really good um, selection of parts um, so yeah I've, I think my parts bill is outrageous at the moment but that was quali this done qualifying and then it's already bent so yeah, I don't want to know the cost per minute to run that. Yeah, everything else was pretty sweet. Gearbox was good, clutch was good, engine was good. Had no misfires or anything silly like we had in testing. So that's that's a bonus. Um, we managed to maintain our position, even with a crap car, because the rear anti-roll bar fell off it as well in, on impact. So it handled like an absolute... I'm, yeah, I'm sure you saw it already. Like that fifth gear kind of flat out corner, 110 mile an hour, and it just let go. I was like... Hang on, what's going on? But yeah, we survive and we're going to go into race two in a minute and hopefully make up some places ready for race three. Dan's doing the final little tweaks now. We've swapped front arms and stuff like that that were bent. We found a few little bits, but um, just making sure the ride height is level now and then we're going to do tracking and then end of all, we're going to do camber gauge and then spanner check everything. Ready for race two that's going to be at six o'clock and it feels like a long time away. I'm getting tired already, so I'm going to need a uh, energy drink or something to get me through the last race, but hopefully, the car will maintain good and we'll have a really good race, make up some places ready for the last race tomorrow. Coming into race two now and I am hungry to move further on. I, I need to make these places. On the first few laps, I actually made some pretty good progress. Coming around the outside here, managed to cup onto a slipstream, but my car is just so slow at that hairpin. I never managed to make it work. Round here, I should have made that move work around the outside, held him off on the inside here, but I thought I could stay in his slipstream and kind of gain, but I never actually made much progress at all. I was just slow. I lacked in so much pace. I wasn't quite sure why the car set up. Look, look, I catch people through these corners so well, but then they managed to just gap me every single straight. Like, watch how much he pulls out. I got a great line through there, and he's actually physically gapping me. So that's super frustrating. Going around the left-hander here was always my strong corner, but I was just really struggling to get her turned in. The front tires were just not gripping up. Everyone had so much more grip than me. I just couldn't understand it. Like, I, it was really baffling me, and I got, yeah, super frustrated, but I managed to kind of hold on to positions. I never really lost many. Um, the idea was just to uh, keep the car in one piece, but yet again, you see it just break loose on the exit of that corner, and I'm just losing all that exit speed. 
Um, coming around the outside of this driver here, managed to brake late, get it turned in on the throttle nice and early and hold it around the outside. So pretty happy with that move, um, considering you see that wing flying in the air, that was mental. Yeah, again, I'm up the inside, someone's around my outside, I push him wide, I bleed out the brakes and he still managed to overtake me off the track. So I'm thinking like, what the hell is wrong with my car? I'm in a good slipstream here, but there's nowhere to use it yet again. You can't actually go around the outside of anyone there. You run out of track on the outside because of the nature of the corner. And just see how much my car is... Fight, I'm fighting my car for that hairpin every single time. I pretty much tried everything I could, so I threw a different line in here. I just clicked third on the exit of the corner a bit early to see if that would help me. But look, I just managed to get gapped. I've got some great overspeed now, but it all kind of gets piled up into this hairpin where Chris Fraser rear-ends Mikey because he tries to back us up and I get on the throttle, rear-end him as well which was super frustrating on the last lap, um, but my, my um, nose comb flew up and at this point I could not see a single thing. It, I was absolutely blinded going through this section. I couldn't see, and especially up here is like one of the fastest bit of the tracks, 100 and something mile an hour, and I just could not see. I just wanted to bring it home. As well as being a big wind block, I also couldn't see my apexes and I was taking it a bit cautious, but yeah, that's why one more car overtook me towards the finish, um, but I managed to hold my space again from uh, Armstrong behind me. I'm in a good slipstream, so I didn't lose too many positions there. But this is me <laughs> inspecting the damage. I just couldn't believe it. What is my luck? I thought you made up to like P9, but then it just like slowed down, I think, your car. I don't know what happened. Yeah. What happened to Wes? Feet were on fire. Someone gave him the grass and the brake was Oh. I just watched from behind go. Uh, I've got no rear end. We need to drop the rear end down and drop the bar. Absolutely bloody carnage. I don't know. I just don't know. Don't have the pace for some reason. Everyone says my car's super slow, straight line, but you're gonna get run over. Yeah, I had a very slight bit of contact. I rear-ended somebody because they rear-ended someone else. So it was like a dominoes effect. And um, yeah, but hopefully I haven't done a rad and all cooler and all that. But that was a fun race. And I'm ready for some beer now. Right, this is the next day, it's race three. We're going on live on ITV now, so I wanted to make sure this was a good race. I, and like I said, I had no kind of callback to anybody. I had no option, so I changed the setup massively to what we usually run. And uh, we hoped this was gonna work. It was a big change, so it was a big gamble, but the car was actually pretty flawless. Um, it handled so much better with the setup changes we made. And like I said, we didn't have much testing, so we kind of had to make it up on the fly, as well as me learning the track quickly, the mechanic had to learn what what car I wanted quite quickly as well and the communication was quite tricky because of the lack of testing but I managed to get a good slipstream here like I said it just bundles up into this hairpin um, trying to go around the outside but that never worked so I thought I'd, I'd hug the inside to try and defend from everyone else with the setup changes I seem to get a better exit out of the hairpin which is good Carl Jones tries to go two by two around here so I take full advantage learning from my mistake in race two and uh, followed Chris all the way through. But yeah, you can see the car breaking loose. The rear end was definitely not there. We're going in here to the two by two. So I think, right, I could probably make a place up here or at least it's gonna slow them down so I can catch up. Um, but yeah, they're still pulling from me, but we come down into here. I had that epic slipstream, but I got nowhere to use it. I'm just blocked in massively. But the idea is if I close up into Mikey there, then Chris can't turn in, but I still couldn't turn in. It was too tight, so. I had to let that one slip. They're going two by two again, round the outside. I managed to get a really good run here. Um, Chris moves over so I get a bit of slipstream as well and then I'm up the inside of Mikey into turn one, which was a nice move, happy with that. Um, but yet again, the car felt epic. I'm making really good progress. I'm still lacking speed down the straights, which is really frustrating, but I managed to catch in the corners. Yet again, look how much of a handful my car is in the hairpin and how much um, Chris pulls away in front of me there. So. It's just super frustrating. I couldn't get this set up and the balance right of the car, especially with limited testing. Yet again, Wes trying to go around my outside, block the inside, turn in, smash the apex, get a good drive out. Um, but towards the end of the race, the car started dropping off massively. Even though I got a really good run out of there, like I can't see any different to what everyone else is doing through this run. But Wes seems to get a wicked slipstream and just there's nothing I can do about it. I've tried to hug the inside and defend and he comes all the way around the outside. So... I know, and he runs super wide here. Look how much I'm trying to keep the car on the road. The rear end is just trying to break away. I think from race one where we overcooked the rear tires because the rear anti roll bar fell off, I was really, really struggling at the end of race three to try and just keep the rear planted to the ground. Look, Wes is all over the place sliding and I still can't catch him. Um, it's just super frustrating, but it is what it is and purely my fault for uh, exhorting the tires in race one. Like, yeah, again, I'm coming into 
the double apex here. The car is just breaking away. I can't get on the throttle early, and he managed to gap me massively out of there um, into the hairpin, get it turned round, right on the power. And I know these two are battling right behind me. They're two by two, so I'm thinking I'll give um, the attacking car a bit more slipstream so he can get alongside the next car, and then I'm going to um, close them up together by breaking early into the chicane. So they're going two by two now, which then gives me a bit of breathing room around the back. So I was pretty happy with that move. I was pretty conscious of trying to back them up into each other and go two by two so I get a bit of a launch down there. Coming into the last corner, yet again, squirling in, a bit of oversteer on the entry, and I managed to hold them off for the last lap of the race, which I was pretty happy with. Yeah, it's difficult. The rear tyres were so good. Oh, I thought you were going to Unbelievable. Yeah, I knew, oh, yeah, shit. That oh, was fun. That was good. Yeah, yeah good job. It looked really good. Well, the car felt much better, but... Yeah. 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 Figure it out. That's got to be a P7 in Pro. Huh? P7 in Pro. What a weekend that has been. Absolute chaos. Obviously, I haven't finished anywhere near where I wanted to this weekend, but it's been an experience. We've learned so much. In that last race, we made a massive setup change, just like completely opposite to what we usually have um, just on a win and it definitely paid off it was so much better um, so that yeah it was a big lottery but it came through uh, we damaged the tyres so much in that first race Dan worked on the car relentlessly and smashed it and um, LFP helped us out massively as well but yeah if, if we managed to get all the testing that we wanted or originally planned and we could have got the car dialed in and got me dialed in before the weekend but yet again we had to make it up on the fly but we made it through and uh, we made some good progress, so I'm very happy. Absolutely spunked all my budget and more, so I'm probably in minus figures as I'm talking to you, but it's been an amazing experience. I can't thank again Quadlock Enough and EBC for sponsoring this, these two races because without them, I really wouldn't be able to do this and I'll be in real bad debt. <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean, hopefully this is not my last race weekend of the year, but for now it is, and uh, hopefully I can catch you soon at another race weekend or just on another vlog.